The path to getting into the music industry uh, for me was, I think, a lot like most paths start. You're in bands. You have that initial love of music and records, and you're in bands growing up. And so I did that for a long time into my early 20s and um, toured and, and made a bunch of records. And the whole time, I ne hated being in a band, like the, the photo shoots and the touring, being gone all the time. And I, I didn't like being in front of cameras, and I didn't like being on stage, really. And so whenever we'd make records, I would always think like, with sometimes bigger producers and see, watching them work, I just always thought like, I could totally do that. This guy's making a lot of money. He's not having to go anywhere. He can have a normal life. So that was when I kind of really started to think about shifting gears and um, I had just gotten married. So we moved to Los Angeles from Santa Barbara and I had zero experience. I didn't know what a compressor did. I didn't really know anything. I just knew that I was gonna start to work with artists. And I bought an Mbox and a laptop and I just started recording people. There is no clear-cut path. Some people think you can go to a school for it. That might work for a lot of people. It's certainly not the way. In my experience, in my opinion, I always tell like interns, whoever's wanting to get into this industry, it's like, just start making things and start meeting people and do what sounds great to you, which sounds so cliche, but it really is true. It's like, build something and then they will come, you know? It might take a year, it might take 10 years. One of the things I really wanted to be good at over the years was being a multi-instrumentalist. I grew up playing drums and guitar and piano and most of the basic like band instruments. And um, with this new signing I did, Jake Austin Walker, when I developed him, I was like, we're not at the point where we're gonna be bringing in players, you know? So I would just play everything. Like the single that we're gonna be releasing in 2018 called Rolling Stones is all me playing. And it sounds great. And it was, I didn't have the sense of like, this could be better, let's hire somebody. For years, I had wanted to get midfield monitors in this space because it's um, a bit smaller room. And so I just used my near fields and that was it. And then when I got the Atom S3V mounted, we realized that I did have space, but it was just up. We were able to angle it in a way that created the space without having to go all the way back. So what ended up happening was I was able to get that distance and really get a good sense of depth when you have those things at a much louder volume. But the, the nice thing about having the, the distance in the midfields that I've immediately noticed when I got them mounted was the sweet spot is much wider. If I'm moving around and adjusting my compressors or if I'm playing and recording to the keys over here, I'm generally not out of the range of knowing exactly what I'm hearing. I have a much bigger area that I can have be working in where th things don't shift and the imaging doesn't shift, which I have been completely in love with. I'm noticing things having the Atom S3Vs in mixes I had done prior on just near fields. There were certain things I'd wrangle with on the, on the spectrum of panning, of trying to get them to sit just right in a mix. And I just couldn't get it when I was working on my near fields. And then when I got my Atom monitors put in, it was able to very easily hear what was actually happening and what my problem was in the stereo spectrum before and kind of get them placed where they were going to sound really great. So that's, that's been a huge plus for me in a smaller space is having that clarity to be able to make those decisions, the critical decisions. You know? One of the other benefits that comes along with having bigger speakers in a smaller room is the ability to kind of blow away your clients, which makes you look like a rock star. <laughs> makes you look like you're, you're worth all the money they're paying you. This true story, just last week I had uh, a band in that I've been producing, and um, I initially started listening to the mix with them on my smaller near fields, and they hadn't been to back to the studio since I had had my Atom uh, S3Vs installed. And then I clicked over to the Atom, and the, I wish I had the look on their faces uh, recorded because it was a kind of a dance heavy song with a lot of great low end, and everybody just went like, whoa. And so there's that impact that you just can't get on a, on a near field that you can really 
show off a great mix to clients if they're sitting in the room, and even a room that's not enormous. You still get a massive sound. And to be really honest, it's more fun. Like, I'm having way more fun listening and mixing on the S3Vs. It's like someone kind of took like a layer of like fog off my glasses, and it's just fun because I'm able to play a bit more in the mixes and then not have to fight. And it's just fun to listen to music on them. It sounds great. It's one thing to be able to hear everything clearly. It's another thing to be able to come in and clean the studio and blast James Brown, and it sounds super great. <laughs>